What up, what up, what up? Welcome in, everybody. Best of the Chris Vernon Show here on Grind City Media. I am John Roser. We are out once again today. We will be back with live shows on Tuesday, January 2nd. Hope everybody had a wonderful and safe holiday weekend. You heard from Dan Patrick yesterday. We're going to get right into it now. This is one of the most memorable interviews we have ever had. Hustle and Flow Academy Award nominee Terrence Howard was in town and he joined the Chris Vernon show in studio. And I mean, it was just a wild ride and insanely interesting to listen to, too. And so we're going to replay that for you now. Hope you enjoy it. All right, we're back. Chris Vernon show. And oh my goodness, I can't believe he is in studio. You have seen him in Hustle and Flow many years ago. You've seen him in Iron Man. You've seen him in Empire. He is Hollywood star Terrence Howard in Memphis. Thanks for coming in, man. Yo, thank you for having me here, man. I'm sorry that it was the last minute. I wish we had planned it a little bit so we could have had some time to chop it up. We only got to talk a few minutes, but. I like how you do your thing, man. You got good spirits, man. Thanks, man. So, first of all, why were you in Memphis? I'm scrolling through social media yesterday, and I called Jenna, and I said, hold on now. I said, Terrence Howard is in studio. I said, yeah. all right, he's in town. I said, you got to get him to come in with us. And sure enough, was able to make it happen, but there was a movie premiere for you. Yeah, but I appreciate the fact that you wanted me in here yeah, and man. asked about that. That means everything, and that's what Memphis is about. Most Memphians will reach out to you. It's like DJ saying to Skinny, come back home, Skinny, Skinny, where you at? That, that meant a lot. But I came here in an attempt, um, Lynn Sittler, I call her Auntie Lynn. She is the film commissioner for uh, the Memphis um, Film Foundation. She's, she is putting together a, a pot or a fund so that the young men and women within the community can still try and achieve their dreams and have a place where they can come together and have funds where they can buy equipment to shoot their own little shorts and be able to tell their stories and, and, and contribute to the narrative and change the pejorative that's being used as the most dangerous, violent people. They should be violent for a reason. They should be dangerous in the sense of um, the innovation coming out of it with their ability to question, their critical thinking. That's why they should be called dangerous, but that need to come together in order to do that. So the film is about saving your own movie theater. And if you remember, the movie theater has, from antiquity, been the piazza, the town square. You go back a couple more, 100,000, uh, 1,000 years, 2,000 years, it used to be a fire pit where everybody, it was a communal fire, where oral traditions and stories were told. You pop up another 2,000 years in, in, uh, across the annals of time, and now you have Shakespeare being taught. Why? Because people needed etiquette. We learned etiquette from listening to Shakespeare or watching Shakespeare throughout the mid-century, and you knew how to behave. We don't have that anymore because we've been disconnected from the um, theater, which is the center of our very being, the, the main chakra it, with, is being destroyed. Our home tree is being destroyed, and we're standing by and letting it happen. You know, where are you going to fall in love at? Where are you going to make out at for the first time? So that's what I'm here for, to encourage the youth and the older youth to get back home. The theater is where it began for all of us. We should have town meetings there. They should have um, any kind of convention, any kind of uh, graduation. Why aren't we reaching out to the theater and booking those places? Why aren't we doing plays? Why aren't we doing lessons? Why aren't we edifying and growing together? You know, let's, let's close our borders in a sense. Let's build within. We have enough talent in this city to make 20 movies and have enough places where it can be seen and enough innovators to do something about it. So that's what I'm here for. It's like what y'all did to me in waking up BJ, you know, whoop that trick. You know, you've got to be the trick you're whipping. You got to whip that little, there's a threshold guardian out there for everybody, no matter what you're trying to accomplish, there's going to be something there. And that guardian is you saying, are you worthy? 
You better whoop that trick, whatever you gotta do, and, and be the next best person so that when they see you, they live by your example, and you're never a hypocrite. It's just by what you do. So that's what I'm here for. It's an amazing answer. How'd you get that role? Um, which one? You talked about you yeah. talked about how much it meant to you, and you talked uh, about like and, and yeah, and you have this relationship. <sighs> that you will have this never-ending relationship with the city because yeah. of that role. You know how I got that role? Stephanie Elaine was the producer of that movie. She was doing a movie called Biker Boys at Lawrence Fishburne. Um, uh, dang it. <laughs> uh, Derek Luke. Um, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people. Jaiman Hansu. Really big budget, big, lots of people. There was a day in which I was doing, I had to come and do a, a, a fitting, wardrobe fitting. And that morning, I'm staying at the Chateau Marmont. Stephanie Elaine has put me in the Chateau Marmont. I only have, Chateau Marmont is the same place Jim Belushi died at. You know, J James Belushi died mm -hmm. at. Um, Jim, I hope you're still out there. I hope that ain't just, <laughs> I, I take that back, Jim, you ain't dead. Um, but it's a beautiful, historic place in Hollywood. And I'm going to get breakfast at this place right on Sunset. Um, and I see these four models, and they're eating, and I'm by myself, and I've got a convertible, and we, we start talking, and they're fun. They remind me of people I know. So I'm like, hey, um, I'm headed to, a, to a, 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 a wardrobe fitting for this movie. I said, it would be really great if you guys hopped in the car with me, ride over there with <laughs> me while you're driving. I want you all to... When we get there, we get out the car, everybody kiss me on the cheek, and then y'all go and have fun on the set and meet everybody, and I'll go and do my stuff, and when I come back, I'm gonna put my hand up, and, and I'm gonna do like this, and you, you guys on. see me, and then you come and hop back in the car and we leave. So we have this plan, I'm just doing it to mess with everybody. Yeah. I'm just trying to mess with everybody. So the girls, they had a good spirit. They were exotic, beautiful, beautiful women. And so we come back, we do it, and everybody on set saw how I behaved with the women. And Stephanie Elaine, I think she called Craig and said, hey, I think, and it was just me doing a joke. I was just playing a joke. And she said, hey, I, I know you need a pimp in a movie. Yeah, yeah, I know you need a pimp in a movie. But it turned out that it was the best experience because those girls, they were staying at the Standard, and they were doing, you know, calls and all of that. I had four bedrooms at the Chateau Marmont. I was there for a month. They came and stayed with me for the month. Those four women. <laughs> what the they, heck? We, we what bought, is going on? We bought on? easels. We what? bought easels. We painted. We we talked. We were just. It was like a family. We were. There was nothing going on. It was just we were people. It was the first time we were just people. Just. It this is really incredibly cool. strange. It was really, really, it was, it was the, one of the best experiences of my entire adult life, you know. And, but that's how I got hustle and flow. So the, the producer calls Craig. He says, "Okay, so now you're with Craig, and now I know you guys have been friends ever since the movie." Yeah, but I didn't even want to do the movie. I didn't want to play a pimp. I was a Jehovah's Witness at the time. Mm. That's why I didn't put my name on the. For like, like three six mafia, they wrote um, "It's Hard Out Here for a Pimp," but I also contributed to that the same way with that I did with um, with whoop that trick. With, yeah, with uh, no no, it Al. ain't over for me with Al Cap with Al yep. Capizzi. But I didn't want to put my name because I was a Jehovah's Witness and Bible mentality. I didn't want to have my name attached to three of the best guys. You know, three six mafia. I didn't want it. I, I thought it would have a bad connotation, uh, so I didn't put my name on it. Even though these guys are really beautiful, sweet guys, all of them. You but know? at so the time, I didn't do you it. thought yeah. I don't want to be. I part didn't want to do it, so I didn't want to do the movie. Period. And he kept trying to get me to do it. Kept trying to ask me to read it. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm not. You know, and he was like, just, just, just read the script, and if you don't like it, you know, let me know. So I, he called me the day that I was supposed to have a conversation with him, and I was, it was six months after I was supposed to read the script, and I hadn't read it, 
and I'm just BSing him walking through, and he says, and I said, so just which girl is he, which one is he, does he like sleeping with? And he was quiet for about 30 seconds. He said, you haven't read it. And I said, no. He said, do me a favor, hang up the phone, just read the first page, and if you hear a lie, throw it away and don't ever call me. If it's the truth, you know you call me. And I read that monologue. Turn the page, man ain't like a dog. That changed my life. And I, I was, I called him back after I read it and apologized. And I was like, when do we start? When you guys got done filming it, did you think it would be a success? Um, or did you think it would just be a small movie that is part of the Terrence Howard career? No, no, no. There was what we all contributed in that film, there was, there was magic. There was, you knew. It was palpable. There was something that was happening that was more than just a movie. It was, it was a cinematic, it was a birth, I think, of, of a cinematic classic, you know, that changed the heart of people around the world. There was this 84-year-old billionaires that said to John Singleton, I had no, after she had watched the screen and she said, I had no idea that I had that much in common with a Memphis pimp. That struggle to be better than you are and to have to run game just to deal with the, the troubles out there. Nobody really want to run game. Nobody want to put a dog on their face. Is everybody scared? How, how'd you figure out how to be Memphis? Juicy J. Al Capone. Those brothers took me around for three weeks and corrected me. Where'd you go? Every turn. Oh, everywhere. 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 She said, I'm listening because I tried to say. When you understood, away. like, this is how, this is how yeah, these people like, live. No. This is how I have to act. This is what it's truly like to be the character that is yeah, DJ. Well, what I wanted to find out was why, where was the pain coming from in Memphis? What was that great pain that was everywhere? And it was that unspoken thing. April 4th, 1968. It was the loss of- You the, thought he admitted, admitted from there. That's what you get. It never recovered. It was still feeling that and everybody, it was down in themselves. And I think they recognized in DJ, you gotta get up and do something. The best lines of that movie was in, when I was talking, when DJ was talking to Key and he says, you know, sometimes you got to lie, you know, in order to get what you got to do. That's the reality. We learn how to lie by the age four. If you don't learn how to lie by age four, you are not developing properly. It feels like uh, you and I both have a mutual friend in Craig Brewer, and it feels to me, just from talking to you, uh, even before we went on the air, your relationship with him is different than the typical actor-director relationship. No, it's forged by fire. You know, when we did Hustle and Flow, there was some chafing because Craig was very particular about what he wanted. You know, he wants your head turned this way. I didn't know he had the eye, his picture. He didn't give me a storyboard. So I didn't know where he was gonna have his next shot, the frame of it or anything. So I'm trying to do me but he's trying to do his story and we had to try and find a balance in between so that it wasn't micromanaging. But his vision, you couldn't mess with his vision with what he was creating. But so he made the movie. It's a brilliant movie. The character of who this man is, you know, he's, he's Joab that's gonna go up with David and fight the, the Philistines even though they're outnumbered. He's, going, he's one of the mighty 30 men, the 30 mighty men that, that David, King David had. You know, that's how Craig is and it's the, the, the reason for it. When I did Empire, um, Empire had a logo. If you look up the logo for Empire, you'll see the silhouette of, of, of my face. Now, I was told when I got to set at Empire, when, they, when I got there, in February, no, in March, early March, late March, early April of 
2014, I was told that that logo that was already there, that that was a composite of me and Hakeem. I was like, oh, great. You know, and it made sense. I weighed 260 at the time. You know, I thought I was supposed to be Suge Knight. That's what they told me the character Lucius Lyon was. So I was like, let me put on this weight. Let me do all this. So I don't, we didn't do a photo shoot, but they've got this beautiful silhouette. I was like, great, it looks great. Years later, as I start to thin out, I don't see Hakeem in that picture. And I keep asking, where did they get this picture from? Because I know it's me. Craig Brewer came to direct. And in 2018, he was like, oh, I know where that picture is from. I was like, where? He said, from Hustle and Flow. He's like, no, it ain't. He's like, yes, it is. He's like, no, it ain't. He said, yes, it is. He said, I'll show you the frame. I know that movie. And he sent me the frame, and when I went and asked Fox about it, the show that made billions of dollars around the world from the work we had given them, they had put that, that image on every piece of logo they sold. It was their, oh, every piece of merchandise they sold. When I asked them about it, they lost all of their records of the image, how it came about. He recognized it from a frame in from the frame, movie that you guys from a frame. But the big thing when I had what to go heck? when I had to go to jams because you couldn't go to court. You had to do everything through jams. Mm -hmm. You know, a mediator arbitration. Um, Craig showed up, and even though it could cost him the ability to ever work for for Disney, for Marvel, for Fox, he came up and said. When they were asking him, you know, is it a possibility that this came from there? He's like, no, it came from Hustle and Flow. I know my movie. It came from Hustle and Flow. No, it's not a composite of somebody else. I know my movie. Y'all took that from Hustle and Flow. This is DJ. This is DJ. Oh, you needed him. He showed up. Mm -hmm. Showed up and showed out. Despite losing the relationship with the biggest entertainment company in the world. That's a man. That's a friend. That's a G. Mm -hmm. That's somebody that, that walked the walk. That's who you want in your corner. So, what happened with it? Huh? Craig is... No, know. what happened with that? Oh, so it turns out... Did the they end up having to give no, you some check royalties? Out, <laughs> check out this. The arbitrator <laughs> didn't know that it was binding. The uh, thought that uh, what he wrote was the award was binding. And he said even though the image was derived from Hustle and Flow. Fox owns it. End of story. Terrence doesn't get anything. And <laughs> he's quoted things that shouldn't have, that we'd never stated. So we got an appeal. We had an appeal. So now we've just done the oral argument. And Fox's argument for why we took the image, and even if we took it, if we took it, it's okay because he signed away, gave us broad rights. So we have access to anything he's ever done. There's no stipulation that it's only for this right here in character only. They're trying to say it's okay for them to take. Mm. And it's the whole thing that we're going to war with SAG about. SAG didn't come and help me when I went and talked to him. SAG waited nine months and was like, oh, we're sorry. It definitely is a right of publicity case, but oops, it looks like the Statue of Limitations is gone for you. We're oh, so sorry. Boy. <laughs> they didn't send a letter to Fox, how dare you do this to, to somebody. They just wanted their money. So I'm not here to, you know, we could do better as a union. I want to start a new union. Mm -hmm. A thing called MyHolly.app, where all the entertainers can come together and not be limited by gatekeepers. We can get rid of the agents and the <laughs> managers and the lawyers that make you sign conflict of interest waivers mm. because they represent the studio also and the conflict of interest waiver conflict of interest waiver says that even though i'm representing you we also represent the studio and if we have information that may be helpful to you and may be critical to your case we will not give it to you because of our relationship with the studios are you okay with that sign right here and give us five percent of everything you made mm -hmm. that's standard there's nobody looking after us, so we've got to look after each other. What are your thoughts on being an actor um, and 
now seeing like we were we were talking actually yesterday uh the famous director david fincher right i saw yeah. he's got a movie coming out today and it's uh premiering on like netflix i believe right uh the killer or whatever and now we're seeing lots of movies and lots of major stars being featured in things that they just show up on amazon prime they just show up on netflix they just show up and they're never in a theater exactly. right and i know you talked about how important the theater is to you but what do you make of what has happened with the industry and how it has evolved um even since you know in these last 10 15 20 years well there's always a transaction a transition um in any reaction or interaction that transaction and transition it used to be a middleman. We call that a middleman, a, a, a cushion. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on the product, there's a lot of middlemen and how far and remote and exotic the product is, there's a lot of middlemen. Well, delivering information, like one of the things our film talks about, you, Thomas Edison wasn't trying to make movies to entertain people when he invented the, 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 the the, his first thing to make movies with. He was trying to sell products. He was using it as an opportunity to sell products. And so he used the theater where everybody used to do plays, have the opera, where they would have their meetings, they would have their graduations. He now made a deal, de build a, de built a relationship from the silent films that that became a big thing so everybody now stopped dealing with the local artists and only wanted to deal with the big companies. So that's been the trend. So you cut 100 years into the future, we're back there again. Now there's a new medium. They want to get rid of the theaters completely because then now they don't have need any me middleman because they can go directly to the consumer at home right here and we can feed them enough stuff to where they can stay here because what we really want to do is show them these advertisements so they can click buy click buy but the problem is the theaters serve more than the purpose of just watching movies to be entertained with it was a place where we gathered it was a place where we were called to arms it was a place where it was the, it was yeah, it was the So you resent losing this. Oh, yeah, we're not going to lose it. I'm not letting it go. If you let it go, then you become a cyborg kind of organism <laughs> without a heart anymore. Right. What do people bring up to you the most? You go walk through, say you, you walk through the Memphis airport or somewhere, or you walk you're around town. Do they bring up Empire? Do they bring up Hustle and Flow? Do they say, hey, aren't you the guy from Iron Man? What do they, what, when people recognize you, what do you feel like is m their most common response? Well, it all depends. Some people, they see me and they're like, Lucius, Lucius. And I'm forever Lucius to those people. Some other people, they're like, they see DJ. They love DJ, you know. And there's other people, they see, they'll see Q, you know, from the best man. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I love it when people just the look in their eye, their, their eyes swell up and they say, I love you. I don't know why I love you. That's what I love to hear more than anything else. Because when you hear that, you can't help but give it right back mm -hmm. and multiply it. And then it's like, oh man, this isn't an enemy or stranger. This is a friend that I just didn't realize he was my friend, you know, smiling back. so. That, that's what I really like the most when I just do that. But people know me, I don't know, for a lot of movies, a lot of stuff. Nowadays, since I've invented a new form of flight called tangential flight, the linchpin, unlimited bonding. You never heard anything about it, have you? No. Yeah, can you imagine? An a Oscar, new way to an, fly? An Oscar-nominated actor invents a new form of flight that takes it from fixed-wing aircraft and four degrees of, of, of freedom to unlimited degrees of freedom. Tangential flight is the ability to fly around your own center of mass and have unlimited mid-air bonding. That means I have a super symmetrical system, but not just that. Four super symmetrical systems I've patented. You've never heard of that. How is that? 
How is that? Is it my fault? No. Okay. <laughs> I was just making sure. No. I was just making no, sure. It's, it's suppression. It's suppression. Because you know how I figured it out? What's one times one? One times one is one. To multiply means to do what? To make more, right? Yes. Increase in number? Yes. Multiply? Yes. How can one times one equaling one be part of the multiplication table? It fails to satisfy the term multiply. It doesn't multiply, does it? What's an action times an action? You got some weed. I'm, no, no, I'm asking you. <laughs> what Honestly, are we, what are I'm we asking you. Reason, what are we doing reason, here? reason, reason, reason. I want you to reason. <laughs> I don't know. What's an action times an action? A reaction, right? Okay. Have you ever seen an action times an action without a reaction? Have you? No. Because every because equanimity is the currency of the universe. There's always an action times a, react, a re, an action having a reaction. So how can one times one equal one? How can a times b just be a and not b? What happened to conservation? Uh, Terrence, of these are late night conversations. These bro. are no. These <laughs> yeah, are, they are. This is the beginning of, of, of our understanding. <laughs> it should fit. What kind of calculator you got? What kind of phone you got? The iPhone? iPhone. Okay, go to your calculator. Whatever the new. <laughs> no, go to your okay. calculator. Go to your calculator. All right. <laughs> go to calculator. Go to your calculator. Yeah, you I got do too. You got iPhone? What are we doing? I want both of y'all to do two separate things. I want to do the same thing to start with. Turn it to the side. Okay. All right, now I want you to both hit the number two. Did the whole calculator show up? Hit, hit number the, what? Hit the number two. Number two. two. Go to the square root. It is the second column from the left, third row. It'll have that square yeah. thing. All right, 1.4. 1. 1.414213562373095. Yeah. Holy crap. Now I want you two to do two separate things now. <laughs> two separate things. I want you to multiply it by two, hit times two, equal, don't you do it. Okay. And I want you to hit X to the third. X to the third, it's going to be. Times third. three? No, X to the third. Oh, X, oh, okay, I see it, I see it. X to the third. Yeah, I got you. All right, 1.1. 1. No. 1. You didn't hit X to the third. Yes, I did. If you hit X to the third. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. So I go did back that. again. Okay, you keep so now. Yours I, where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm two, good. Two. Square root. Square root. And hit X to the third. All right, 2.82. 2. 2.8284271217461.90. The same value you got. Yeah. By multiplying it by two. Yeah. And he just cubed it. Divide it by two again. Both of y'all. Divide, divide by two. Divide it by two. No, divide by two. <laughs> hit equal. <laughs> Now, cube it again. Hit X to the third. Yeah. You see that loop? Yeah. That's saying X cubed is equal to 2X, which is equal to X plus X. That's an unnatural equation. That's a mathematical fallacy. And that's the beginning of your math. That's how I invented tangential flight, because your math, someone programmed that lie in there and lied to you and you and everyone. And all your fundamentals are off. Well, That's certainly now. I mean, I don't even know what to think. You heard that I, don't I know what just you happened. heard that I said one times one equals I, I, two. Do you know what just Did you, <laughs> wait, you heard that I said both. Of I was bad at math. I was no, horrible at both it. Both of y'all had heard that I said one times one equal two, didn't you? You had heard it somewhere. Somebody that was yeah, uh, yeah, I heard it. I heard it. And then everybody said I was crazy. Yeah, they did say that. Well, am I crazy or is the calculator broke? I mean. Are, the, are those my only two options? What, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Or am I right? Or am I right? I don't know. Am I, I right? I don't know. Enough. You just did the you did the I calculation. Mean, you need to. You some, just did look, the Terrence, calculation. Terrence, Both of y'all did. Terrence, it. you look. I don't know what you thought you signed up for coming in here, but you need I know somebody y'all about way smarter than us to have this debate. <laughs> no, we're talking about fundamentals. <laughs> we're talking about our basics. <laughs> if all our infrastructure is built off of a faulty foundation. What's going to happen to your house? It's going to fall apart. Well, I hope not. So why do you think our economy and our math and everything is collapsing now? We've been It's all going to hell. I can fix it. That's a <laughs> do it. You try and there's Wait till I show you. Okay. <laughs> what, what did you say it was? I'm going to look this up. Tan what? Lynchpin, tangential flight. Lynchpin, tangential. T L Y N C H pin. Wait till I show you. When did you start caring about this stuff? 
about a thousand lifetimes ago. Really? Like as a kid, this is stuff that you cared about? All I wanted to know was how everything worked mm -hmm. for this purpose. Wait till you see. I got to go, y'all. <laughs> I'm last, loving this. Last thing. We are, uh, you know, there's actually a game tonight. And yes. during the playoffs, every Heal year. Heal the Hood. No, no, we're doing something here for the Heal the Hood. You'll be there. Yeah, Heal the Hood, and we're going to the game tonight. Perfect. During the playoffs, you see 18,000 people. I'm talking like old grannies. Whoop that trick. Yeah. How aware are you of that? When I, it happens and the Grizzlies are in the playoffs and it's on national TV and they're having to talk about how they're showing this crowd and there's 18,000 people all chanting along, Al swinging a towel, you know, in the face of the Golden State Warriors so and whatever. Strange. I had never heard about it personally because I, don't, I wasn't watching TV. I wasn't a big sports fan. I'm, like I said, I'm trying to live two lives. I'm always into my science, always in my lab. Um, and I got a call when I was doing the Best Man, the movie, mm -hmm. the, the show, and they wanted me to come down to the Grizzlies game at the playoff because they were doing, they were going to do Whoop That Trick. And then I, I'm like, really? And then I look up and I see all of this stuff since 2011. Yeah. They've been doing this? Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. This kind of impact? From you that didn't little know. bitty thing? You didn't know. No, I didn't know. That it goes on at the games. They it, have I rally bet, towels with it on dude, there the I whole started, thing. I, I made $12,000 for doing Hustle and Flow. That's all I got for it. Do you make money now when it's no, on TV? because guess what? Guess what they did with the performance world? This is how dirty the studios are. Paramount. 12 grand? 12 grand. I was doing making a minimum. But I sang all of those songs. So when you look up, if you go open up the, the, the CD, DVD and it says any of those songs, it's hard out here for a pimp, it says performed by DJ. Who owns DJ? Paramount. Even though Terrence Howard, it should have said performed by Terrence Howard. Oh, but it's, it doesn't. It, so guess who the well, let royalties me take a quick, go to? Uh, let me take a quick time out. Wouldn't that be your fault? Because you told us at the very beginning you didn't want your name on anything. Well, that Did it was, end up costing no, you no, a fortune? No, 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 no. That was, that, that was as far as, as writing, that, uh, the oh. writing credits. But as far as performance royalties, you don't get I, have, I haven't received one dollar. All of that have gone right back to Paramount. Right back to Paramount. They've known it. Wait, even when it's, if it's I on HBO or something? Or I, every single time. Because it was on MTV a was, million times. Yes, every time it's been played, every time it's been sold, it's all gone back to them. So I've got, you know, it's like it's crazy. They 12 will, grand? They will all rob you. That's the whole point of, of, of starting MyHolly.com, MyHolly.app. They, if they're doing it to me, a veteran actor, yeah. That was represented by CAA, who should have been looking after me. But everybody's got a, hmm. Uh, CAA, their problem was, guess what? They're packaging you, the show. So now they're incentivized to keep, the, keep my payload because they're getting 30% or some huge back end on the back. Mm. So, and they're representing me. Are they going to act in my best interest or in their best interest? So again, the corruption and we don't have anybody looking after that. That's yeah. where you come in. Yeah, that's where Holly. You're gonna comes have in. us flying to space, oh, wait fixing till I show math, you. and wait till I show doing you. the whole thing. And yeah. you'll be at the Did game. you see Big Hero Six? The movie Big Hero Six. Did anybody years ago? Yeah, the Disney. Yes. movie? you're talking about the animated movie. And you see, remember the Microbots? Okay. Lynchpin is the real life Microbots. <laughs> no BS. No BS. I can look this up online. You can look it I'm up online. Look it up. I'm about to show you right now. <laughs> I'm going to look it up. <laughs> and y'all can, you can show them afterwards. Um, I got to get out. Yep. Thanks, man. Loving this, man. Thanks I love the reality of another big talk. Ro Roaster, how dumb do you feel? Amazing. Scale of one to ten. Well, come on. Yeah, they, they, yes, I, there, there are some of this I just don't understand. Well, no. If, okay, anybody got questions. <laughs> y'all got questions. Go to tcotlc.com. Tango Charlie Oscar, Tango Lever, Tango Lever Charlie dot com. That's my book. One times one equals two. Inside of it, I explain 
all of the things that we've been missing from humanity. Anytime you see a green clover, tap on it, and it will take you to supplemental information and everything you've ever wanted to know that they haven't taught you is in those 324 pages. If I'm lying, like Craig told me, delete it, throw it out, but if I'm telling the truth, share it. T-C-O-T-L-C.com. Terrence Howard, thanks for coming in, man. Thank you, baby. All right, bub. That right there was Terrence Howard on the Chris Vernon Show from just uh, about a month, two ago, something like that, when he was in studio. Uh, this one went viral. A lot of it did. Uh, one times one is two or what? whatever. it. I mean, it was wild. A memorable interview for sure. One more day we have left of a Best of Chris Vernon Show interview. It will be Jesser, the YouTube star. Look, I'm not a YouTuber. I don't watch YouTubers, but a lot of young people do. And it's, you know, a day and age I grew up and watched TV. Kids now, they watch YouTube on their iPads. It's what they do. They, they don't get up and watch, you know, Sports Center like I used to do. They, they watch sports highlights on YouTube, on an iPad, or on their phone, or whatever. And uh, Jesser is one of the OG YouTube stars, and he joined the show in studio back, I believe, during the NBA playoffs, or right, right around then. Uh, is when he joined the show in studio. We'll play that one for you tomorrow. Hope everybody have a wonderful and safe evening. Until then, peace.